Oh, we're gonna die tonight. Oh, yeah, get him. Get him. Get him, spider. Oh, gosh. Howdy there, folks. How are y'all doing? My name is Reese, or Brashiat Cub, and welcome to Tech It with Reese, specifically Tech It 2. That is right, 10 years after the release of what we now call Tech It Classic. The Tech It team, in conjunction with, I believe, XJohn was the username, have rolled out Tech It 2, a sequel of sorts to Tech It Classic. This is based on Minecraft 1.12, and it attempts to recreate. The original Tech It or Tech It Classic. It's got most of the mods you'll be familiar with. It's got some fun new surprises. It has Galacticraft. And I'm excited to start playing. So, without further ado, we're going to go to single player. And we do have a world that's already in here. This was from a live stream that I did. Actually, as of recording, it was last night. And it was a lot of fun. I just wanted to hop in and see what the mod pack was like. Whether or not it really did stay true to the original. We're starting a new world, though. This is a series where we're going to have a fresh start right from the beginning. So let's go to Create New World, and we're going to call it Let's Play. We're also going to go down to More World Options, and we're going to set the seed as Cub Games, because that's a fun throwback. I'm going to turn on Allow Cheats so I can fly around and get pictures for screenshots. I promise I'll never cheat in any other way. I'm also going to turn on Bonus Chests, which is the only other type of cheat that we're going to have. I'm going to cycle through these real quick so you can get a feel of what we have available to us. I've always been a fan of large biomes, so I think we're going to go ahead and do that. So if you want to play along at home, we're using version 1.0.0 of Tech It 2. The seed is here, Cub Games, large biomes, create new world. And let's see what we get out of it. I'm hoping for either vast plains or big mountains nothing in between no forests please well this is the exact opposite of what i wanted in fact this is not what i wanted at all i wanted a well hi there puppy dog how are you doing that's nice red currant leaves oh cool so we can collect uh we can collect berries from these or I guess whatever red currant is, presumably some type of fruit. If I break this, will it give me the plant? This is very strange. Shrub wood. This is not from Tech It Classic, or even Tech It Main, from what I can tell. But that's awesome. It looks like we did get a red currant sapling. So at the top of my screen, you'll see we have Wayla, which means what am I looking at? By default in this pack, it's disabled. It's not there, and I kind of like that. It is nice for just having a nice clean aesthetic, but if you want to enable it, by default, it is bound to number pad 1, and you can change that in your settings by going to controller, scrolling all the way down till you get to Wayla, which, or, or, or Wyla, Wy however you're meant to pronounce it, which should be in here. I seem to have not been able to find it, but I assure you it does in fact exist, and you can change the show hide to number pad, well, it's on number pad 1, but you can change it to a different key if you want to. All right, we also have our starter chest here. And it's full of mostly not too useful things. Uh, an axe will be handy, and a pickaxe will be handy. I'd kind of hoped for better food options, although we did get some red currant right after we got in here. Oh, you know what? That chest is also going to be pretty useful. We have our first chest now and our first few torches. Believe it or not, I, I think we're going to hop up this hill here. We're going to have a little bit of a look around, and then we're going to sail away. I'm halfway tempted to just start another world with a different seed, but we're already invested. We decided to use the seed, uh, Cub Games, and we're going to go ahead and see it through. So we might end up leaving this tree floating in the air, if not for the fact that I know that would drive me crazy. Once we're many miles away from here and I can no longer see it, I'll still know that it's here. And breaking it does give us the chance to possibly get some saplings, although it doesn't look like we did, which is a tragedy. All right, little doggy, I'm going to leave you now. I'm going to build a boat, and we did have some planks out of the bonus starter chest, so we didn't really need to cut down a tree. I was hoping for a sapling, because I, I'm going to find a different biome, and it would have been nice to have some of these with me. But I think we're going to head off towards the north and see what we can find. Well, it looks like if uh, the mini-map is to be believed, the river ends this way. So let's go the other direction. Actually, you know what? Let's take a moment to stop and just admire nature. This is just me admiring nature. Don't worry too much about it. 
This is a this is just a normal thing that I'm doing today. Let's not be stressed over it. I suppose we do need to be on the lookout for rubber trees. If we find any, it might be worth grabbing them. Because this is a tech pack after all. We're going to need that. But for the most part, I'm... Oh, this is the way we were... You know, this direction is where we want to be headed. I want to find something a little bit more interesting. I want to find a really nice place to build a house. So if somehow you are not familiar with tech it Classic... It, ironically, this is called tech it 2. But back in the day when I played tech it Classic, it was called tech it 3 because it was the third iteration of Tekkit. Tekkit itself was a multiplayer sequel to Technic, which was, I mean, I guess actually, now that I think about it, it might have been Technic and then Tekkit and then Tekkit 3. Were there multiple varieties of Tekkit before? I, I cannot remember. I can't recall. I might not be a, a reliable historian on that. What I do know is that when I started playing Tekkit Classic, it was called Tekkit 3. So you could make the argument that this is Tekkit 4, if not for the fact that Tech It Legends existed before this, and then there was Tech It Main before that, and then Tech It Light before that, and all of those followed on from what we call Tech It Classic. So the numbering scheme of all of this is a little bit silly, but the name is good, Tech It 2, because it's meant to be a sequel to nothing else other than Tech It Classic, and it is truly an honest-to-goodness follow-up from that. A lot of the bells and whistles you might expect from a more modern uh, pack, they're not present here, which, I mean, they might be a negative to you, you know, you're not going to have to capitate or anything like that. But in my opinion, my humblest of opinions, I kind of like the direction they're going with this, because it is a true, honest throwback to Tech at Legends, and it is not ashamed or bashed by that. So I'm going to build another axe, and the reason I'm killing all of these guys is I don't have iron right now, so the only way to get their wool is to kill them. We do have six wool now, so we could probably head off. But we're going to want to build a bed wherever we end up, because I'm not going to want to die and travel all the way from where we are now to wherever we end up, especially if we end up going on a really long pilgrimage. We're going to want to avoid that. I mean, obviously, the, the answer to that would be avoiding death, but that can be sometimes very challenging. And I don't really know if that's going to be something we can manage. So it looks like the river does continue on here, so so shall we. Oh, there is a village here. We have happened upon one. I see it up there on the mini-map. Very handy. We're going to go over there and see if we can pilfer any products from the local uh, villagers. Pilfering produce would be more like it, because I'm actually after carrots. Carrots are super quick and easy to grow, and while they don't offer a lot in terms of health gain they are at least easy to manage and in a pinch very handy and it looks like i have found their entire food supply but they just leave it lying out here tell you what though i'm not a complete monster so i am going to replant their seeds mainly so if we ever happen across here again we can pilfer them once more so we will replant their carrots and we still have 11 carrots, so that's handy. Oh my gosh, they've got everything over here. They got beetroots as well. We're going to spend quite a bit of time here, I can already tell. Hops? Okay, that's fun. I tell you what, these are kind of out of sight and therefore out of mind, so I'm not going to bother replanting them. Oh my gosh, there are bunnies. I Is that vanilla Minecraft? I've not played vanilla Minecraft enough to know whether or not that's vanilla Minecraft. I think bunnies are a thing, though. They're kind of cute. Hmm... Not a lot going on in these houses, eh? I think these villagers would do well if someone would open up a furniture store nearby. Or maybe any kind of store where they could you know, purchase objects. I, I mean, this house is impressive just because it has a countertop and a little table in the corner. Oh, books! Hot diggity, this is a great find. So we can middle mouse button to sort everything that we now have in our inventory, which is starting to fill up. And with this place explored, yeah, I think we can safely say the last thing of interest here for us is going to be this tree right here, and I guess these plants, which uh, initially I missed. But this is a very special tree, one that I am excited to see. This is a, a rubber tree, and we need a rubber tree so that we can get rubber. Obviously, I guess that goes without saying. So that gives us three rubber. We're gonna clean up the sides a bit, see if we can find any more. Oh, this is a great find. This tree's loaded with it. And then we could leave this tree here, and over time, it will replenish its rubber. But we're gonna go ahead and cut it down because I think that there's a potential that it might drop at least a rubber sapling. 
Doesn't look like it did, which is unfortunate. Just means it was kind of a waste. But it looks like it's getting dark. We've already burned through our first day here, so I'm going to go ahead and collect what is left of this food. And we're probably going to head out of town and spend a night out on the water. So as of right now, as of recording, there is not a pack for uh, BD Craft, even though I would love for there to be. It used to be called Sfax. I don't know why it's not anymore. I don't know what happened there. I'm not sure if there's some sort of epic dramatic story behind it all, or if maybe, you know, falling out with the original creator and they had to change the name. All I know is that it's not called Sfax anymore. We're gonna, we're gonna pilfer a bit of cobblestone over here, because that's gonna allow us to create some slightly better tools before we head out. And I could just dig a hole and get some cobblestone, but this cobblestone is readily available. Someday we will come back here, and I will make it up to these villagers. I will replant all of their food and rebuild all of their houses. I'll make them better than they are now. I'll, I'll make this place fantastic, believe you me. But for right now, we're just going to pill for this stuff. We're going to get ourselves a better pickaxe. Leave that one here. Get ourselves a better uh, axe as well. And once again, leave that one here. And then we're going to get some more sticks so that we can create something to defend ourselves with. A sword. Sounds like the rain is falling and our inventory is now full. So unless we want to, you know, build a chest and leave it here for the locals... Uh, which, I mean, I guess we could, so that they could hold on to those, that axe and that pickaxe for me. We're not going to, though. That would be silly. We're going to kill these pigs on our way out of town, and then we're going to get out of here. I already see that a zombie has spawned. Where's my boat? We're sort of at the limit of what we can carry, so anything else interesting we see, we kind of have to leave behind. It looks like we're heading out to open ocean now, though, with a very large beach there. There's some lava on the surface over there. Let's see what we can find. Let's see if there's any places out here that speak to us. Now, already, I do see something that speaks to me. And that is... Oh, gosh. A giant hole in the world. Oh, that's land. We found ourselves an island and some oil. I'll tell you what we might do here. What is this? It's a crab. So this is from Quark. That's good to know. Let's build a bed and see if it'll allow us to sleep out here. I understand that we are currently standing out in the middle of a storm so if the game did actually allow us to sleep here that might be a bit wild oh my goodness gracious hopefully that means the rain will stop as well we're going to collect if we can fit it in our inventory what can we get rid of here we don't really need to carry around with us sticks we can get more sticks later Beetroot seeds? I don't need more than 64 of those, that's for sure. And this stuff's going to be really useful for paper later on. So let's get this. And we'll hop over here. I realize now that choosing large biomes may have been a mistake, considering how far we have to journey to get out of the one we're currently in, and how I do definitely have an interest in doing that exact thing. Even so, we're going to persevere. This is episode zero. We have episode zeros for this region, so that we can explore and find a place to call home. S -s Sticky dipping, that's very funny, yes. I understand now, don't, don't try to pilot a boat through oil, it will end poorly. Hmm. That's fun. That, that is a throwback to the old days of Tekkit. Just massive unloaded zones. What a, what a fun callback. Man, there are a bunch of squid around me right now. If only we had room in our inventory, we could grab some, uh, some ink sacks. Whoa. Oh, okay. I found myself a trick of sorts. If I pause the game, it rapidly loads the chunks in front of me. Man, this is a persistent biome. I mean, yes, I selected large biomes, sure. But this is a little bit ridiculous. Wowzers. Okay, I'm actually going to turn on my iPad. And I'm now going to turn on a YouTube video. Because, my goodness, this is, uh, this is getting a little bit too nuts. Oh my goodness, we found a different biome at long last. What an absolute journey to get to this point. And I'm gonna say it, this is it. <laughs> Even, this is literally the second biome we've seen, and that's enough for me. Oh gosh, do we want to get our boat that badly? We can get more sticks. We can always get more sticks. That's not a big loss. I would argue even the beetroot seeds were a bigger loss, even though I don't particularly regret getting rid of those. Even though this is the second biome we've been to, 
And even though there's not a whole lot going on here, and there doesn't really appear to be any reason to select this place, you know what? It reminds me of my my Tekkit Main series. Tekkit Main was the file system name given to the version of Tekkit that launched in 2013. And that one mostly focused on space, Galacticraft, which is also, by the way, it's inside of this pack, so that's fun. But the file name for it, like the file system name for it, was Tekkit Main. So that's how I always refer to it. And we did that one in a field, and it was great. Plenty of room to build. It's very picturesque here. Look at all these beautiful little cows all mooing all over the place. Maybe over here on top of this hill. There's so many chickens. We got a beautiful view of the ocean. I think this might... I mean, what we really got to do now is just nail down exactly where in this seemingly unending field we're going to start building. Oh. Oh, that's just over there. So... <laughs> it's just a volcano. We could build in a place where we have a view of the beautiful plains, a nice little winding river, the ocean, and a volcano. And that place is right here. This is going to be the place. Upon this hill, we will build our house. And we're going to get started immediately because it's starting to get dark and the night is full of terrors. So the first thing we need to do is place down our chest and get a lot of this stuff out of our inventory because there's just way too much and we're not going to be able to build anything at this rate. So the tree is now down. Let's also put down a crafting table and let's figure out how we want to do this. So did we get any saplings? No, that tree didn't drop any saplings either. That's a bit of a problem. We're going to need saplings. We're going to need wood. We're going to need to, uh, we're going to need to, to build up, oh shoot, we've got to go somewhere where we can find some more rubber wood because we didn't get any saplings from that one rubber wood tree. I should have been paying more attention to that. Also, this is here uh, as we explored the world because we're really going to need a lot of rubber and that means we're going to have to leave now our home to go out and find some elsewhere which is not going to be fun considering how long it takes to get anywhere. On the positive side, if there's any around us, I was going to say we'll see it pretty quick, but I don't see any. So first things first, let's create a secured space where we're not going to be constantly assaulted by things at all times. So let's create a few sticks. So we'll make 10 times 40... Or 10 times 4 is 40. I should say, and that'll allow us to create a number of oak fences. And then, did we have any more oak? No, we're going to have to go cut down some more oak because we also need to have a gate, but it's starting to get dark, and I'm starting to get a little bit nervous right now. So we need to take a quick breath and remind ourselves that we're going to be fine because as soon as the sun sets, we've already got a bed, and as long as we can get in bed right as the sun sets and before the monsters spawn, we should be able to sleep through the night and then keep working. So this is day two. Coming to a close. New spawn point has been set. That's fantastic. As soon as it kisses the horizon. There we go. Okay, so we got a beautiful sunrise. And we're going to head off down here. And cut down all of these trees. We might also kill some chickens. There is some sense in not killing all of the animals in our immediate vicinity and instead trying to trap them all. That, in fact, is a, a fantastic idea. And, I, I mean, I really want to give myself a pat on the back for that one because we've got a nice, diverse animal group around us. I see sheep, I see pigs, we saw cows further back, we see chickens. Pretty much everything you could possibly want is already right here at our disposal. And it's going to be relatively simple to just, hopefully, trick them all to coming over here. And, you know, befriending them. Maybe we'll make them an offer. What was it that they did in Alice in Wonderland to convince all those little clams or oysters or whatever they were to come up to the house with them? And then they all got eat, eaten, aided, eaten in, in that one very frightening scene when you think about, I mean, the implications of it. I mean, they're portrayed as little sentient creatures and then they're all just a meal. It's, I mean, I understand it's, it's to make a point 
I don't know about believing your mom or not trusting strangers or something, but jeez, they showed that to children? In theaters? I mean, it stuck with me as an adult, but not really like the stranger danger part, just the, wow, Walt Disney had something wrong. He was a very sick man, a very sick, sick individual. Okay, so I think a potato is going to be the best object for this task, although a sickle, if it works the way that I think it does, would also be good for this, assuming we have sickles. We do, but I'm not sure when in main hand, so they're from Project Red Exploration. In certain packs, a sickle can be used... Well, that, how's that a stone sickle? It's made with flint. I don't understand. They can be used to harvest things. I have a feeling this one is just a weapon, but I'm not going to know until I try. So we might as well make a wooden sickle and see what happens. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, see how it clears up a big section of grass? That's great. I'm glad we built this. It's also not a bad weapon. It has a faster attack. I mean, it's got lower damage, 4 compared to 5, but that attack speed is so much higher that could be worth it. And that that's not something I wanted to cut down. This would have been very handy if it... Oh, come on. Don't also break the saplings. That's a little bit annoying. It's hard to be precise with it. But uh, this would have been handy for collecting all of the legitimately obtained crops that we got from our kind friends back at that village. Fencing, though, we're going to start off with a very small space. And the idea here is just to keep ourselves safe from anything that might creep up on us while we work. If it happens to get dark and I'm not paying enough attention to realize it, you know, we want to be weary of those sorts of situations. And then later on, we might even transition this into something of an animal farm. It'd be good to have an existing fenced area to do this in. So with that, we're going to also need a gate to allow access in and out to ourselves and nothing and no one else. And then finally, we did get those torches. So I imagine, you know, we've done a pretty good job of skipping the nighttime. The last couple of times it started to get dark and I don't think we're going to get lucky like that again. Now, one thing I do not have is a water source right nearby me. We can go down here to the river, though, and I guess at least temporarily we can throw down some carrots and have them start growing. And maybe right here? Oh, wait. Does this also break objects in a vicinity around it? What do I need this for? Does everything do that? No. No. Oh, well, in any case, we'll go ahead and throw down some carrots. And we plant anything else in our inventory? We got hemp seeds. I can't plant them here. Potatoes. Sure. Let's create another chest. And then we can have a nice double chest here. And that'll hold everything, although we're going to want to bring some sugar cane with us. And what happened to our bush, our red currant sapling? Let's plop that down right out here and see if we can't get some fruits out of it. So I think in our inventory right now, we've got a decent supply of tools. We're going to go plant some of this sugar cane down here. Because in the, I think I keep calling them reeds as well, but you know what I mean. It'll be nice to have more of this in the future. And we're going to plant it on the grass and on the sand here. There we go. Starts of a nice supply. The next stage in the operation is going to be collecting more wood to build more fencing as well as ladders so we can get a mine started. But we're also going to want to locate. And man, I just realized we are a little bit above sea level. So we're going to have to go a little bit further to get our mine started if we want it to be up here. But there's some trees that way. I'm not sure how far the river goes, but we're going to get our boat and we're going to go down there and we're going to see if we can locate a rubber tree. Now, the sun's already starting to set, so I don't really want to go too far afield right now. I might go over here and get these trees instead. We'll just go collect those trees and then we can come back here and we can nap the night away and then go locate our rubber tree. Whoa! Oh my goodness, I wasn't even paying enough attention to realize that was a cherry tree. Just thought it was a cool red tree. Okay, we need to be heading back, but I wanted to grab whatever type of bush this was, and I started mining it before I even had the opportunity to read 
it was a golden raspberry bush, okay. And then one other thing to test is whether or not this is actually decent as a weapon. Oh yeah, the reload on it was way faster, so that's handy. But then also it's now broken, so maybe we'll build... Well, we don't... We can't build a stone one. We can build a stone one, but it's actually made of flint. So many eggs out here. This is great. Everyone loves a good free-range chicken, which is exactly how they're going to be until we have the resources necessary to put them in pens. Yeah, oh, can't reach the bed. Get me to bed. We're just gonna wake up and there will be a creeper standing right there next to us going, Oh, hi there, I'm here to blow you up, sir. So once again, we have our inventory cleaned up. We've got our tree tap in hand and we're going to go down to the river, down to the river and pray. But what we're actually gonna do is we're going to go find a rubber tree. Oh, rubber tree, we need to harvest carefully. Bit of a crossroads here in this river. I've got to memorize the paths, else we get lost in the future. So we're going back to this horrible biome that we couldn't escape from before. Now we're willingly returning to it. Not for long, though. Just long enough to spot a rubberwood tree. Which might actually be difficult, considering all of these trees are very large and imposing. Although that could be to our benefit. All of these trees look relatively the same. So you'd like to think that a rubber tree would stand out among them. All right, we got ourselves a cranberry whoosh, uh, bush. Whoosh! Cranberry whoosh! I, I thought cranberries grew, like, in the water. But it goes to show you what I know, I guess. Now, unfortunately, we have an oil spill. And that's going to prevent us from going any further this direction in the water. So we might have to carry out on land. But I was hoping that we would just be able to spot one. Hmm. It would be awful if these were the only two biomes in the entirety of the game where rubber trees simply did not spawn. See, these cows are far enough away from my own that I'm not too worried about doing what I'm about to do to them. Alright, we're going into the woods. It's going to be dark and full of terrors, but I don't know what else to do at this point. Get some birch wood while we're here. It's a really nice wood. I'm rather partial to it. I cannot believe that we happened upon a rubber tree once, and it didn't give us anything of use. What? I hear fire. Oh! Uh-oh. Oh, oh no, oh no, we found a bit of the forest on fire, and I didn't bring a shovel. Now, the shovel wouldn't be helpful here, really, other than to help me get up here and figure out what's going- Oh! Hey, wait. That's a rubber tree. Thank you, forest fire. It's a good thing we found this one, too, because I don't see any other ones except for right there. So the rubber tree is characterized by its very long head. It kind of looks like something giving you the finger from a distance. Let's go ahead and get what rubber we can out of this before we cut it down. The goal wasn't really to get rubber. I mean, we, we brought a tap just in case we found any rubber. But the goal is to actually, hopefully, come back with at least one sapling. Oh! Oh, it looks like we got one. Just one, though. Yep. Ooh, two rubber tree saplings. Okay. And then I think we saw another one in this vague direction. Maybe we should have stayed on top of the trees. Wait a minute! Well, this is it, but what happened to the rest of it? <laughs> Wait! What happened here? It's like someone came and cut the bottom out from all of these trees, actually. I don't have an explanation for that because it definitely wasn't me. I wouldn't have done that. But I'll tell you what, I don't even care if there is rubber in this one. We just need another sapling. Give me, like, one more. Oh, yeah, baby! Oh, we got we got four total. Okay, that's actually pretty solid. I, don't, I wish I'd brought my shovel because it would make collecting some of this clay a breeze. Clay's pretty handy to have, too. Not a super early game necessity, but it's good to have. But then again, we live next to a river and we're going to find plenty of clay. Oh! Oh, five! Okay, I found another sapling floating in the water right before I took off. So now we got to get back out of the forest. I think going straight east is going to be our best bet. Get back to the river, past the oil, and then we'll head back down to the place we call home. And if we fell some chickens along the way... All the better. Oh gosh, the sun setting. Oh, I hear skeletons. Oh no. 
This is not the river. Oh boy. Okay, we found it back. We found our way back. Words are difficult. We found our way back to the river. Right as the sun has set. I wish we had a backpack or something. Those are cows. I definitely thought that they were pillagers. Oh gosh, wait. The way home is on the other side of this mountain. We gotta get back over there. This might be the last use of our axe. Ooh, it's close. Yes, I saw the oil on the mini-map. So that gets us back over here safely. And back into the water, where at least we can move with some speed. Oh, hi there, sir. How are you? He's fine. Oh, oh, they're taking shots at us. We're moving with such blinding speed, the world can't keep up. It's going crazy. Okay, here's our junction. We want to take a right here. I think going left would probably take us back to the ocean if we wanted to. Okay. We got some monsters over there. I think we'll leave the boat here. Wait a minute. Did I go too far? No, no, no. That's our volcano right over there. So we want to probably park over here, actually. Right about here ought to be good. And then we're going to head... Up this hill. Avoid. There, that's where we want to be. Oh, and they're waiting for us, too. How much you want to bet the game is not going to let us sleep tonight? Because there are monsters nearby. The the one that we can do anything about is this fella right here. Hopefully. Oh, gosh, I can't block. I don't have any way to block. Wait, what can I do about him, then, under those circumstances? Leave me alone. We're just going to have to strafe. We're going to have to strafe like a madman. Come here, you. Oh, we're going to die tonight. Oh, yeah, get him. Get him! Get him, spider! Oh gosh, did you see that? Oh no! Okay, so we don't actually know what's happening up there right now, but it looked like that spider was going back to give that skeleton a piece of its mind. There's a creeper. Okay, we gotta get back up there. That skeleton was already pretty damaged, so I think that the likelihood that the spider came out on top is pretty solid, considering there's literally a bone on the ground over there. So if we can avoid getting the attention of that other skeleton... We can get inside and then just go to bed. Yes! Oh no! Oh! Oh, they're now they're shooting each other. The sun is up there on fire. We could still die, though. We could still die. The opportunity for them to kill us is still there. Anything could happen at this point. We're just going to be patient. We're going to let the sun do the hard work for us. That's one down. We're going to collect some of these goods. We might get ourselves a couple of arrows. Maybe even a bow and arrow out of all this. Plenty of bones, which is handy. I'm not going to rest comfortably with this guy over here. So we're going to go ahead and deal with him as well. It's weird that this game never added other colored creepers officially to the base game. Because these guys are perfectly colored for, you know, the, the old original you know, beta and alpha forests and, and fields. But they do stand out in certain other environments. So having different creepers in different biomes would be cool. Or maybe a nightmare, who can say. But we're going to go ahead and plant all of our saplings out here. We've also got a cranberry sapling, which I guess we can plant, like, over here. We've also got a birch sapling. We can plant over here. Got all kinds of things in our inventory, don't we? Wild cherry we've got. Got tons of stuff. Oh, gosh, that one sprung right up. Well, good. We're good to go with that. Next on the agenda is probably to get our first mine up and running. So we do have a stone shovel, and I suppose what we could do is we could go down here to ground level, and we could dig into the side of this mountain, and that would save us a lot of digging, because digging from up here is going to take a while longer. So that does come with the, the negative being that we're going to have to go on a little journey to get to the entrance of our mine every time we want to use it, but... Might be worth it. We do desperately need cobblestone right now in order to build some furnaces. So uh, we, we could also build maybe one more chest. And that's going to be to hold the rest of this stuff. We don't really need to take that or that into the mine with us. These objects alone should suffice. And should we go ahead, perhaps... We, we don't even have enough stone to build another pickaxe, so no. I was going to recommend or suggest to all of you that we also go ahead and bring with us one additional pickaxe. 
but we cannot. That is not an option available to us. So I'm going to carve out of the mountain here a path down to where our mine is eventually going to end up being. Maybe, maybe right here? I mean, we could go all the way to here. I mean, look, there's even this already. This is kind of freaky. <laughs> that is kind of freaky. That that's already there. That's where the mine's going to be. The decision's been made. So, let's let's actually make this a bit of a double staircase situation. And we're going to go make some charcoal so we can have torches. Wait, we can't do that. Wait, we can't even do that because we don't have a way to cook anything. That's what we came down here for in the first place. We need cobblestone. So I guess we'll start with that. Um, right here. Now, mines are always potentially dangerous places. If you've ever played Until Dawn, you'll know that the threat of the Wendigo is always looming over us because there's a curse in this mountain. Ooh, if any man should ever eat the flesh of another, then the spirit of the Wendigo will be unleashed and we'll become murderers, cannibals, feasting on human flesh. We don't want to do that. We want to avoid that. The, the transformation seems awful. Okay, furnaces. Three of the darn things. Cook me up something, please. I would like charcoal. However much that'll give me. I think that'll give me one. Yes. Two sticks for one charcoal, and then that'll give me eight more charcoal. And then lime wood. Let's see our uses for lime wood. Presumably we can make lime planks. Yeah, I don't know. That, that kind of looks interesting. We might... What, what I was thinking of is we could take one of these and go ahead and start cooking up even more charcoal so we can have more torches. And then we could get the top of this hill completely lit up as well, which would be handy. Start using some of this uh, dirt that we dug up to start filling in all these holes up here and leveling all of this out. Okay, so that's going to give us 20 torches. And we can start just throwing these down around here. A random assorted places. What we could do is hit F7. And it'll show us where monsters will spawn. And we can just put down torches to make sure that that does not happen. In the immediate vicinity of our base. You might consider this to be slightly cheaty. I am not pressed one way or the other. At least now. It's one less thing to worry about. And that does only leave us with seven torches. But I reckon... Yeah, we got some more charcoal. So let's head underground. And we're just going to keep eating cranberries for right now. Because that seems to be pretty effective. And we're also going to go ahead and hit F7 once we get down here. To turn this back off. Because we don't need it. We're, we're smart Minecrafters. We've been playing this game for a while. Ooh, we do need a door here though. I'm not going to even start digging until we have a door. So this will give us three doors... And then, where did all the sticks go? Is the recipe for ladders what I think it is still? Yes, it is. So we've got 18 ladders. That is not enough to go anywhere at all. We're going to need more. Okay, so that is 54 ladders, which is a bit more like it. We're going to, it looks like, get one more night of sleep in before we head into the caves. Lost track of how many days in we are. But we do have far more rubber trees than I expected we would by this point, which is going to be helpful when we start actually doing modded Minecraft. <laughs> oh, jeez. I used up all of the torches I had around the, the the upside of the world. Okay. How about that? Well, okay, well, that's unfortunate. Um, There we go. It's terrible, but we'll work on making a nice entrance later. For now, I will now dig. It's a bit dark, I realize, but uh, if you can see, I'm using this really nifty method that I figured out years ago at this point that allows you to dig straight down without ever risking falling into lava because you're always standing on two blocks simultaneously. And we did think to bring a shovel. The only issue is you got to be careful that you're not accidentally making contact with the ladder or it'll register you as being on a ladder, at which point you won't be able to mine as quickly. And already, I see that we just found something useful, which is copper. We're not going to collect that... Well, I mean, I guess while we're in the area, we might as well go ahead and collect it. What I'm going to say is we're going to dig down a little bit deeper before we stop to collect ores. But actually, if we just find ores on our way down, there's no reason not to stop, collect them, leave a torch, and continue on. Actually, something else we should do while we're here 
is maybe put down a crafting table and build another pickaxe because let's be honest this cobblestone pick is not long for this world so having an extra one is going to be very useful as we continue to dig down deeper and it should be useful to have a crafting table there part way down in case we need to craft anything while we're down in our mines although again we'll likely need to create another one further down once we reach whatever our branch mining level is going to end up being probably around 12. one thing we're definitely going to want to build is a divining rod that's going to make it a whole lot easier to find useful things underground it'll allow us to right click on a wall and it'll tell us what the value in terms of emc the objects behind the stone are so we'll know whether or not we're wasting our time digging in any particular direction but honestly it's not really worth it until you get to the tier two because the tier one sees only what is more or less directly in front of it speaking of things directly in front of us iron that means we can finally upgrade our pick. As if we've been using stone for a really long time. I've been recording for an hour and eight minutes so far. We're already making really good progress. I'm leaving behind... Oh, ten! Oh, man, we've almost run the gambit of everything we need to make machines. In fact, now that I think about it, redstone is the last object I can think of, at least off the top of my head, that we're going to need in order to build some early machinery. So... Looking here, the reason I'm leaving torches on every ledge is so things don't spawn on these ledges. Because that would be a hassle for us to have to deal with later. So, one EMC, I'm, I'm, we're not going to have a whole lot of uses left on that. So, EMC is not a measurement of durability. It is, however, a measurement of value that any individual tool has left to it. So, we could exchange that pickaxe for essentially one dirt is the way that that works so we can only go down another five levels i realize now we're going to run out of our ladders one two three four and then yeah one more that'll take us to ten so that's not quite bedrock but honestly probably about as low as we want to go i do see lava not far from us so that could be slightly above us maybe or maybe just directly ahead of us. Let's do this. Let's break a hole in the wall here, throw down a torch, and then we will dig in this direction. The one thing we don't want to do is come out level with lava. Ooh, there's basalt. If we come out level with it, oh my gosh. That was almost a disaster. So this is handy. If we can find, I see maybe sulfur over there. I think that's silver, aluminum, aluminium if you're so inclined. This is great because this is going to be a good source of obsidian for us early on. I do see some real coal over there as well. That's going to be handy. We're going to want to get out of here though. And we're going to go smelt up some... Although actually, we don't really need to get out of here. I think we have everything we need with us right now almost to just go ahead and start smelting our... Oh my gosh, look at that. Redstone! We picked the best place to mine. I'm very weary of lava, though. We're going to want to be careful. But maybe right back in here, if we have the materials for it, and it looks like we do, we're going to create an additional crafting table. We'll use that to create... Actually, you know what? Let's create a couple of furnaces. And we will start cooking up some of that iron we got. So there's eight iron, which means we're going to need at least one coal. And if we can get over there to the coal without falling in the lava, and that's going to be the difficult part, <laughs> not falling in the lava and dying. What I like about this most, though, is that hopefully we won't have anything spawn down here because of the high light level. And we could go ahead and hit F7 again to verify. Yeah, that was F7 on, in case you didn't realize. That means that nothing's going to be spawning around here, and that's that's really good. So I'm actually going to build my way around all of this if I can. There we go. Is that going to start flowing out this way now? No, thank goodness. This really does feel like an area where a mistake is... It's not, it's not a matter of if, more so a matter of when. So I'm a little bit nervous. I do hear monsters to my left. Monsters to the left of me, lava to the right, here I am, stuck in the middle with you. We're just, we're just holding down that shift key. We're gonna just keep on holding down that shift key. 
All right, let's get out of here. Okay, do we even have... <laughs> oh, folks, we only have one stick, so this isn't going to work anyway. Well, that's a tragedy. We'll go ahead and leave this cooking up, and then I suppose what we could do is we can combine these two together and get a slightly better stone pickaxe. And then we can head up to the surface to get more wood. I do wish that we had one of those mods that made us go up ladders really quickly. But we do not. And just have to live with that. Looks like it's going to be daylight maybe when we get up top. Yeah. Although it looks like either sunrise or sunset. Uh, let's see. What direction is north? Ooh. Okay. Uh, get me into that bed. Just in time. So, let's do some sorting, and then we will leave behind the copper and the tin. We will take with us some sticks, and in fact, we might want to grab more than that. Let's grab another wood, and then we can create more sticks. So that's going to be enough for uh, two pickaxes and 12 torches. We'll go into our stack of torches we already have. Looks like a lot of trees are growing, so that's good. Back now, and... Oh! oh okay! I, I, you know what? We need to address that right now before something horrible happens. I can't see a world where I don't get here in time, you know, onto that ladder. But just in case, there we go. We'll just narrow that hole down. And then what we could do is further down, we can have more ladders in certain places. But okay. Should have now iron should now have iron pickaxes two of the darn things i'm not the type of person to let anything go to waste though so we'll go ahead and use the stone pickaxe until it has picked its last stone and that's it so now we're gonna go ahead and get the redstone and then we might need gold i'm trying to remember if the early machines need gold or silver i did just live stream this last night again so you'd think that I would remember, but we're going to grab some silver and gold just in case we do need it. That way we'll just have it and be ready for it. We're going to try to work our way around to that gold over there, and the reason is that gold over there will not require us to build a bridge out over lava to reach it. And also, yeah, I see you, zombie. Hold on, I've got a rule about having all of my roofs be three meters high, so let me go ahead and deal with that real quick, and then I'll come deal with you. I don't like this giant bit of stone jutting out here, because that presents something called a blind corner, which you never want in a cave potentially full of zombies and creepers and skeletons and spiders. All right, you, you can reach me now try really hard. I'm gonna let you come to me. Just gonna wait over here patiently. I'm gonna cut up this aluminum. Aluminium, if you're so inclined. Sir? Sir? Hello, sir? I know that you're there. Sir, thank you, sir. Thank you for acknowledging my existence. Appreciate that. Let's go ahead and ruin his little safe environment here. With some torches. Maybe too many torches, actually. See what I mean about this corner, though? It's it's terrible. I need to be able to more or less see, as I approach, what is in the rest of the room with me. That's how a hero brine type will sneak up on you. Whoop. Gold. You've got to be shrucking me. <laughs> oh my gosh, we got so lucky! It's only two diamonds. Really, we only need one, though. For early game. That is so fortunate compared to my live stream. You would not believe the hours that I spent trying to find diamonds in the live stream. That that is nuts. That that I love so I'm so grateful. I mean, it would have been better if there was more, but one is fine. Ooh, lapis! Not an immediate need, but something that's gonna be nice to have. Uranium, that's fun. It's a fun one to have. Okay, well, I do believe that we are reaching the limits of what we can do. We already just broke a pickaxe by accident. I'm just trying to actually keep an eye on that. We're risking losing a lot right now. If we died right now, it would not only be unfortunate, it would be annoyingly inconvenient just because of the sheer number of items that we currently have on our personage. So we're going to get out of here. It is currently nighttime outside, which could be a problem depending on how many monsters lay between us and home so let's top off on cranberry and let's move like like lightning 
Fortunately, we know we've placed down enough torches that there shouldn't be anything spawning near our base. Which hopefully gives us enough time to get in here and get some shut-eye. I mean, it looks like the sun is rising. So maybe getting some shut-eye right now is not essential. But we got some. Looks like we've also got some red currant leaves. Uh, cranberry leaves. Uh, can we collect these? Do we have to wait till they reach a certain level of maturity? Hi there. That's probably what it is. They just need to... It says currently harvestable, but it also shows shears. So I'm assuming it, it means the leaves themselves. Right, though. Let's do some sorting. Because everything's a little bit... At the moment, everywhere. And I think that's something we probably should do. You know what? You know what something we definitely should do is... We should definitely cut down some of these trees so we can get some more wood. Oh my goodness! There's so many places to get sap out of this tree. Not this one. Not this one. Looks like one on this one. Well, that tree over there is now my favorite. All right. Now, with all that wood that we've got, we can make more sticks and we can make more fences. Some of you may see where I'm going with this. And some of you might not, and that's okay. We're going to need a couple more gates first off. Some of you might not see the wisdom in it, but the double layer fence is a brilliant idea. All right, I'm not going to waste time building a house right now, because once we have access to a transmutation table, that's when house building gets good. But I guess the next thing we need to do is determine where we go from here. So the first thing that we're going to want to build is a generator. And then, oh, look, these objects are in here for my live stream. That's good, because we do want to build both of those as well. But a generator, and then we want to build an electric furnace, as well as a macerator. And there is a stone macerator that we can build if we wanted to. I don't exactly know how that works. But I think we'll probably just go directly for macerator. Even though it looks like we can't upgrade a stone macerator. I guess I could just look that up. Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, it looks like a stone macerator is just a regular macerator that runs off of coal instead of using electricity. So, let's go ahead and say we will build one of those next time just to test it, as well as the electric furnace, the iron furnace. So, the iron furnace is 20% faster, and it's also slightly more fuel efficient. So, I think it, instead of doing 8 items per coal, it does 10 which could be handy, but immediately after building those. In fact, we're probably going to work in that order. Stone, iron, for actually no, stone, macerator, iron furnace, and then on from there. Hopefully we can get all of that done next episode. We will need to get more diamonds, but that'll be easy once we get a philosopher's stone. Then we can go build a portal and all of that, so... Yeah! Well... Thank you folks for watching episode zero, the the getting started. Uh, we've done all of the Minecrafty things. All the Minecraft bits are now out of the way. We've got not really a house, but a base. We got a mine. We've got a pretty decent supply of food, although we could start cooking up. Actually, let's cook up some meat before we go. Uh, and the best way to do that is going to be using, check this out, fragmented carbon. So every one fragmented carbon has the potential to cook up one item. And then that way, let's say we had a mismatch, like eight fragmented carbon and seven raw beef, you might think, well, if we had a single charcoal or a single coal that cooks up eight items, so cooking up seven, we're losing a little bit of fuel efficiency. We're, we're losing one item's worth of fuel, but this is one to one. So we never lose any efficiency. It's brilliant. It's great. I love it. Thank you folks for watching. God bless each and every one of you. And I'll see you next time. Bye.